Whether you're joining us across Australian community TV as New Game Plus or community radio as Zed Games, welcome to the show. We're going to be chatting video games and a whole lot more for the next little bit. My name's Jack. I'm in the RMITV studio with Hope. Hello. Hello. And Seamus. G'day. Hey, how's it going? Uh, we have a full show, an entire show. It's hard to believe, as hard as it is to believe, it is happening. Normally and we just do a half show. No, no, forbidden, none of that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be chatting with Kevin Powell. He is a voice actor in games. Uh, he's had a very interesting experience in the industry. Um, so that's going to be coming up a little bit later on. Uh, Hope, yes. you've been playing Outer Worlds. What was the other game you've been playing recently? I've been playing Manifold Garden. That's coming later. Yeah. But you've also been playing Outer Worlds. Yes. Both of you have been. Yes, yes. Tell me about Outer Worlds. It's is it good New Vegas? <laughs> it's fine, New Vegas. <laughs> yeah, New Vegas was already good, Jack. Like, you know, like, oh, right. Okay, cool. I mean, I feel like a lot of people say that New Vegas was the best Fallout game. Like, the full Fallout kind of went down the shadow. I think people really liked the character interactions and the story of New Vegas better than other Fallout games. Right, yeah. And that's what Obsidian do really well. They're really good at, at the writing side of things and the character interactions. Mm. So I feel like Outer Worlds kind of brings that into the forefront a bit more, but it also does a lot of things that just feel pretty much exactly the same as Fallout games. So it feels kind of dated in that way? It does. I feel like this game could have released when Fallout 4 did, and I, other than it being quite beautiful, I don't really feel like it offers that anything that new or interesting. No. Um, as like an RPG, it's... Like, it's got all, like, the similar things that you're just very familiar with and kind of come to expect, right. but it doesn't really go beyond that. It doesn't really have that real pull for me to want to jump back in. Like, I'm enjoying it while I'm playing yeah. it, for yeah. sure, but I'm not like, oh, I need to be playing this. It's kind of like, yeah. It's this a is fun like, coasting sort of game. Yeah, exactly. It's, right. it's, it's my, you know, I haven't had a solid RPG for a while, and, like, this is this is it now, but it's not like it's not like I'm going around telling everyone, you have to play this. I'm like, I'm, I'm enjoying it. So walk me through, what is the setting of the Outer Worlds? It's a lot like Firefly. So it's, um, it's okay. sort of space-faring humanity and there yep. are colonies on different planets. Mm. The colonies are owned by corpor corporations usually and in, in a way so are the people. People are like indentured to them and work for them a lot of the time. It's got that sort of rustic space feel. So like not like Star Trek super hyper technology, more grounded in reality. You know, your ship's a bit of a bit of a junker. That kind of thing. I'm trying to think of like a, like a dated kind of spacey game, but none, none really come to mind. It's basically Fallout in space. Like, it's got that right. aesthetic as well. Does that have Like have No that Man's Sky cross Fallout, as uncomfortable it is to kind of hear that? Well, it's, it's kind of because you're on the far reaches of space and everyone's kind of having the start again, and so that sort of makes it feel really grounded. But, you know, it's still sci-fi. It's still got those sci-fi tropes and elements to it right. that makes it feel futuristic, but it does have that grounding because it's like starting again, you're like... It's like discovering new lands in all the times in the world. And like buildings are blocky. They don't look like futuristic in the sense of technology. They just look, it's like dystopian future. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. So there's sort of an overarching sort of plot there, but the characters, are the characters still really solid? For like an RPG, I feel like that's kind of essential. I, I like some of the characters. Uh, some of them are literally characters from Firefly, but like slightly different. They, they get more different the more you get to know them, but when you right. first see them, it's that's Kaylee from Firefly. But is that a good thing, though? Because I hear good things about Firefly. I mean, it would be, but it feels very referential in that it's it feels like an in-joke. Right. But to me, that's really boring. Yeah, I'd original. rather meet someone completely new who stands on their own than be talking to someone that's trying to get me in based on my like for this other character. Is it detracting because of that? or like... me, I, I know that some people would love it. Like, I can see, like I, I really like Firefly, don't get me wrong, but there are people who are obsessed with it, and they're right. like brown coats, and that's their whole thing, and that's totally fine and I think cool. that's why Firefly is like more of a, as much as you hear good things about Firefly, it's m better known for having a cult following Correct. than yeah. having a, like, going down as, like, one of the biggest, like, the most well-known. Like, it has a cult following. And I think that for people who really love it and they'll either love or hate this aspect of it because yeah. it'll, it'll either be like, oh, this is like that thing I love or it'll be, this is too close to that thing I love. Right. Yeah. Well, for me, I haven't watched Firefly, so I guess I'm coming in a bit more fresh, bit fresh compared yeah. to that. Yeah. And I've, I've been really enjoying all the characters for the most part. And... One thing I'd say about Obsidian as well that I think they do really well and what I loved about Fallout New Vegas and I think comes across fairly well in the Outer Worlds is factions as well. Mm. Um, and the factions, 
And that's, that's a big part of the Air Worlds. It's all about corporations, as Hope was saying, that like they sort of rule and own these planets and own the people. And it's the type of thing where people like, they're third generation for this company. And so they, that's their whole life. Every single, every single conversation they have, they're doing quotes and things for the company sayings and Sounds stuff like that. Sounds like Japanese working, though, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, so like bleak. when they first meet you, sometimes they'll be like, there's a, there's a faction called Spaces Choice, mm. and they'll all be like, Spaces Choice, it's not the best choice. <laughs> it's Spaces that, Choice. But they're obligated to say that because they're part of the Spaces Choice they family. They have to say the motto. Yeah, right? and that's right. who they work for, and their Jeez. work is just everything. Like if you, And because you're out in space in these new lands, it's like, if you lose your job, it's like, all right, get out of the settlement and try and survive the wilderness, and you probably won't. Right. So... The, the stories, the, the, the plot is sort of there. It has some sort of grounding and stuff you might know. The characters can be sort of hit or miss. Talking about gameplay. Um, it, and again, it plays fairly similarly to Fallout games. Yeah, it's, it's just like, it's fine. It gets the job done. Yeah. 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 And There's nothing new about it, really. No. They've got like this time dilation thing instead of that. So instead of like pausing like Vats does to let you zoom on different parts, you can sort of slow time. Yeah. Which is clarify, this is a shooter. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a first person shooter. It's a first person RPG. shooter. Um, yeah. Like sometimes I use a melee weapon, so la di da. But you know, <laughs> if and, they've and got ranged and you don't have ranged, <laughs> then you're going to get messed up pretty quickly. Yeah, and there are, there are self elements as well, and that plays a lot into the skill elements too, and your like how you build your your character. But yeah, with with the gameplay, it's. Um, it's very much you see a waypoint, you go to the waypoint, you do the thing, you. Pull in the quest. Is it as boring as like? Because I'm I'm getting the vibe of like shooter RPG. Is it as run of the mill as Borderlands One kind of is? I feel like it's very different. Any well, it's, that's, that's the thing. It may it probably sounds like we're being negative. It's still good. It's still, it's good. still really good. But it's what? just not going to blow you away. It's yeah. not, it's, it's not going to blow that's you away. And like comparing it to something like Vats, I love Vats because it's very tactical and I can really plan out my moves. Well. The equivalent here is like, it's just not as good. It's no. just like, I can't really be tactical. And again, you can be as time goes on, you can upgrade your skills in more in depth there to a degree, but it's just not as satisfying as, as Vats was, like to me, yeah. No, I agree with that. And I also, so far for me, the RPG progression hasn't been as satisfying either because I felt no need to put any points to anything combat because the combat's never been that big of a problem. I've, I, yeah, it's on normal, it's way too easy. I pull it up to hard and then it's like kind of, a there's a bit too, of challenge. There's, well, it's kind of almost gets... Oh, it's too much. It, almost, it kind of just makes you have to just think a bit more and be like, okay, I have to find an alternative route because I just right. don't have the capacity to beat this in combat. Right. Okay. And it's not, like we said, nothing about it's particularly bad. No, no, it's, it's very confident. It's good. I can waste a lot of time just sort of playing it. But it's I don't feel that... It's beautiful, yeah. Yeah, the skyboxes are amazing. I just don't feel that pull to be immersed. I'm not, I'm not immersed. Right. It's just a game that I play. It's a game that's good to burn time, but don't expect much more out of it. You won't be surprised. Yeah. No. Fair. Wow, what a resounding review. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Uh, you're hanging out with Jack, Hope, and Seamus in the RMIT studio. We'll be back in a little bit. Welcome back to the show. I'm hanging out in the RMIT TV studio. My name is Jack, and I'm here now with Kevin Powell. Hello, how are you going? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, you are a, uh, a voice actor. I mean, you're an actor more broadly as well, um, but you've done uh, voice acting in, in quite a few games, some of them being um, Tahira, which was a sort of tactical RPG, mm. um, Battle Chef Brigade, which is a, a favorite of mine, and then All Well um, a little bit more recently as well. Um, we'll get into that in a minute. Okay. Going a little bit further back, how did you get into acting? Got it. That's, yeah, it's a really interesting question because um, my... My starting point was, and I feel like nowadays it's kind of a cool thing to say, but like uh, as a teenager, I played Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. But we were talking before about sort of our age differences, and I grew up during the Satanic Panic. So that was at a point in time where if you were playing Dungeons and Dragons, you were doing something that was unsafe. <laughs> and so uh, as a teenager, like I, I taught uh, myself like a really dodgy, I'm not going to do it on camera, it's terrible, <laughs> a really dodgy Scottish accent by listening to uh, Billy Connolly specials. And I loved... Right, okay. Yeah, I loved that aspect of, of role playing. And it took me the longest time to realize like going through de delivering like 10 years of corporate training right. um, after doing a lot of that stuff as well. So you were doing a lot of corporate voiceover just sort of generally before you got into acting? Well, actually I was doing a lot of just corporate in-room delivery 
delivering of delivering of tech because in my previous life is I actually worked as an I used to work in IT before I right. moved over to acting. Okay. Yeah, so I'd do a lot of basically being in a room and talking to people, cool. and it was a lot like running role playing games because yep. you're just trying to keep energy up and keep people keep people awake. Exactly. In, in the in the meeting room, it's like, come on, guys, I know it's three p.m., but stay with me, okay? Coffee's up an hour away. Yeah, because the text the stuff that you're dealing with is often so dry. Yeah. So the information takes care of itself. Keep people amused. Yeah. Um, and then I just had one day, I just had a student say, like while I was goofing around, because I'd just run the same course, like back to back two weeks running. And right. so to keep myself amused, I just started goofing around and had a student say, you should be in radio. And I thought, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, so is that where that went? You went to radio or? No, no. Ah. Like from there, basically, um, it was, there was no map. And so I tried to figure out where to go from there. Yep. And personally for me, um, and absolutely... This isn't any judgment on anyone who works in IT from a consulting perspective now. But <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I worked with a lot of clients, but I won't name where ethics was a real... Like, I felt like they weren't the best companies in the world. They weren't... The they IT weren't companies best, weren't? It, uh, well, the companies I was working for as clients. Right, okay. Yeah, so I felt like they weren't really solving the world's problems. And so I decided... I decided that commercial VO, because apparently I don't like money, commercial VO I was going to leave off on because it had ethical concerns for me. You're on community TV. It's okay. We don't like money either. There we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so then so then basically I made a choice. Video games have always have been the medium that I really enjoyed, and I realized that that same... The thing that I actually really loved with role-playing was touching that live wire of emotion yeah. and just that performance aspect of things. And so that's where it went from there. So how did you end up getting your first sort of gig in games? Got it. That's a really good question. Um, because I I think the very first thing, and I think the thing that you've got to do when you're doing anything creative, is there has to be a point in time where you, you say to yourself, I am a thing. I am a voice actor. I yeah. am a presenter. But then past that point, I got some really amazing advice from Truna, who is basically one of the people behind Igda in Brisbane. Um, oh, Truna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've worked with Truna a bunch. Yeah, cool. There you go. Yeah. Um, what did and, she say? Well, I because... I, I reached out to her on the advice of someone else, and I said, "So I'm interested in I'm interested in performing in games. Yep. Like, what should I do?" And so she said, "Look, just turn up to your local chapter of Igda." And so I turned up there, and, and from from that point forward, I made a lot of friends who are people who are still near and dear to me. But I just turned up and tried to be useful, and then eventually, basically, you you put out what you do, right? And then people come back and go, "Oh, hey." We need a thing. It turns out you're that thing. Right. Okay, cool. So was that, you, you came across your first games gig, Authentic and All Caps, through Brisbane? Like Brisbane Game Dev? No, actually through through Melbourne Game Dev, because uh, I was based in Melbourne. But right. Because basically I was talking with someone who was based in Brisbane, yeah. we went through the we went through the Igdorani in Brisbane. Oh, right. Who, so, who suggested for me to, to actually turn up in Melbourne. Right. So, yeah. So I met Giselle Rosman and a yep. lot of other amazing people who are involved in the community there. Um, and cross paths with Christy Dina, um, who was the the mastermind behind Authentic in All Caps. So were you working, like, t to my understanding, and, um, like, I imagine it's different for a lot of different projects, but voice acting, like, a lot of the different parts of game development seem sort of um, siloed or sort of done separate from a lot of things. Like, you see... Uh, video game voice actors in a recording booth with a voice director and it's very much sort of a, away from the rest of the development process. Mm. Was that the case or were you sort of more deeply entwined with um, how that game development went about? That Look, that's an excellent question. Um, I think with that, there was more consultation because, and I don't know if it's, um, if it's Christy's academic background, but she was very keen to have everyone involved from an early stage. And so there was very much a collaborative aspect mm. to that. But a lot of the time, and this isn't me playing the tiniest violin in the world for myself, but a lot of the time it does feel like you're the kicker on an NFL team. Where yeah. basically there's a point in time where they're like, it's so okay, hard. <laughs> yeah, it's your time, go kid. Yeah. And then you kick the ball and then you're off and you're back in the showers. And it can be a really lonely thing. Like I, I know a lot of people who work at the arcade in Melbourne, which is an amazing co-working yep. space. And I envy that feeling of community that they have so much. Yeah. Yeah. I, look, I mean, I'm, I've, I'm, I've been working there for the last month, and I, that's definitely the case. And uh, sometimes, sometimes it's just like we got to buckle down and get some goddamn work done, and that can be stressful in its own right. Mm. Um, but, but going on from that, um, sort of one of your more recently uh, well-known uh, roles probably would have been in Battleship Brigade. This was um, released. It was a year and a half, two years ago now-ish. About um, that, yeah. It was like late 2017, I think. Yeah. And um, God, I loved it. It was so dumb at points, and it was. Really good fun uh, to play because it was a weird mix of like side scrolling and then like 
match three again? People are like, what, yeah. am, I, what am I playing? What is this? Um, but the characters, you played three of them. Mm -hmm. Ziggy was, I mean, the game doesn't really take itself that seriously. So I imagine you had the opportunity to sort of take these personalities and sort of run with them. Yeah, yeah. The, um, I worked with George Huffnagel, who's someone I've collaborated with a few times, mm. and he had been given a very strong brief, and he had an idea of what he wanted in his own head as well for the characters. Right. But there was certainly a chance to, there was certainly a chance basically to see like what we could do in a session with that. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Tone wise, it was so it was so absolutely cheerful and just unabashed about what it was. Which yep. is, so it, we, they made it a joy to record. Cool. Um, so uh, one of those projects uh, you mentioned before we started recording that that's going on. Um, uh, I think you said like a film festival. Uh, oh, that's sort of, sort of tour. Yeah. Um, where can people sort of uh, if they're curious to see more of your work outside of stuff like Authentic and All Caps, um, Battle Chef Brigade. Um, what was that film and how, how do you think they, they might be able to find out more about it? Got it. So probably the best place to find um, anything about The Peacemakers is look for the trailer. Look for a trailer on YouTube called The Peacemakers 2019. And if you don't add the 2019, you will find the old stuff. George Clooney, Nicole Kidman right, okay. film from, uh, I think it was like late 90s. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the trailer's there. At the moment, you can't get access to the film itself because basically festivals are very, are very particular about <laughs> premiere screening rights and right, that sort okay. of thing. Um, but yeah, other than that, like if you want to, if people want to find like more of my work, then I would definitely recommend checking out um, Night Terrace, which is an amazing audio drama where I've done some roles in that. They've got a Kickstarter, which is up at the moment. Check that out. Other cool. than that... Um, Pick up Battleship Brigade because it's yeah. an awesome game. It's really good fun. I love it a lot. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much for coming into the studio. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, you're hanging out in the RMIT studio with uh, New Game Plus. We'll be back in a little bit. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my name is Jack. I'm in the RMIT TV studio with Hope. Hello. Hello. And Seamus, hello. Hey. Uh, Hope. Yes. You've been playing a game called Manifold Gardens. I have. I can't remember the name of it, I swear to God. You got it pseudo wrong. Oh, what's it called? Manifold Garden. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I mean, that's all right then. We um, don't count S's at New Game Plus. This new ga <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you were playing this on PC? Correct. Cool. Um, I was playing it, it's on the Epic Store. <gasps> it's awesome. Yes, oh I know. Oh, my God. Are we having this conversation? <laughs> no. No. Oh, let's man. just move on. Sorry. Um, it's also on Apple Arcade. <laughs> cool. Um, I did download it. I haven't played it yet. But as someone who doesn't own an Apple device, it's nice that Same. it's somewhere else that I can get to yeah. it. Yeah. Got to play the, uh, download the uh, Epic Store. The right? Epic Store, yeah. <laughs> the, the, different uh, episode, different episode. <laughs> um, so, Manifold Gardens cool. is available on PC and iOS. Yes. At least. Yes. Okay. Um, it is a beautiful um, Escher inspired game. So it's quite um, abstract visually. Quite abstract, like lots of stairs going in different directions, lots of repeating architecture, that mm. kind of thing. And it's a puzzle game. And. It's probably one of the best puzzle games I've ever played. Ooh, yeah. Why? Um, it is so intensely clever. And so the, the premise of it is every room that you're in, the gravity can be swapped to any wall. So any wall can become the floor. Cool. Um, that makes for enough puzzles in itself. And then you've also got every wall is also assigned a different color. So you can sort of orientate yourself so you know which kind of color that you've picked. Right. Then you find these blocks, which will have a matching color. The blocks can only be moved when you're on the right oh, color, floor. Yeah, okay, the right, right orientation. Yeah, and they will they will uh, fuse to that gravity. That's their gravity. That's the that's the universe those blocks exist in. Right. So you have to be there to move them, um, and you'll need to put them in switches and all these kind of things to move through. So it sounds really basic, but it's intensely clever. Then you find out that these blocks are actually fruit that grow on trees, which will only grow on the same plane <laughs> as the colour. Abstract so, still holds true. Yeah. And then you'll have to be, you might need to, to find a seed spot and some water to plant a new tree, so you need to redirect water potentially. And it just manages to pull so many puzzles out of these concepts. You also have, when you're not in a room, uh, you might be outside the architecture and you can walk around because you can make anything the floor, so you can walk on anything. But you can also fall infinitely and they loop. So you, you take a step off a ledge, you fall for what feels like forever, and then you land back where you were. Or you try to push yourself in a new direction to get somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, so then... So basically, if you're looking at, like, you're on a, on a walkway and you see this high up ledge, you're like, oh, I can't get there. Walk off the edge, 
minute, half minute later, fall. you fall onto, the, onto that high up ledge. So what you'll probably end up doing is, um, say you see the high up ledge, you'll fall and you'll kind of fall here. So you'll need to fall, keep falling until you fall here. And then you'll need to keep falling until you fall here. And then maybe you can land on the ledge. Um, it's... It's so, it bends your mind in some of the most amazing ways. But I haven't heard frustrating yet. No. And it can be a little bit. Right. So when I first started playing, one of my biggest issues was I, I felt a bit nauseous mm. because you are changing the orientation. It is first person. Um, but I found that as I understood how the game worked, that didn't happen so much. So I mm. think a lot of that for me was my brain was fighting it. Because it's not used to changing orientation and, and seeing these things. probably that quickly as you probably are in the game. Whereas, yeah. like, by the end of the game, I was changing orientation really quickly and getting around and not feeling anything. There is some frustration um, in that it does not hold your hand at all. You will have to work everything out for yourself. Right. Um, which actually works really well for the most part because it does it in such a manner that you do feel directed the whole time, mm. but because there's no explicit direction, you feel like you're smart enough and you're doing it yourself, right. which is really nice <laughs> because it makes you feel, feel clever. Yeah. 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 Um, but it does mean that there was this one time where I'd done a series of puzzles and the next puzzle I did what I did in the previous one and moved on when it felt like I was ready because it was the same um, it was the same major idea. So you, you did a bunch of things and then you managed to make a light trace a path and you followed the path. And so I did that again. And, you and move on. Yeah. Right. And so then there was another light and I went to follow the path. And I couldn't work out. I got to the end of the path, but I couldn't get into this next building and I couldn't work out why. And I was looking for the entrance because sometimes they're slightly hidden. And you've got to do something to open them. And then it turned out I actually hadn't done something back where the Way light back, originated yeah. from. Right. But okay. there was nothing to tell me that. So instead, I was just intensely stuck. So it does the classic puzzle thing of being like, oh, you don't know what the, pro what the, what the problem is or how to solve the problem. Mm. Like, if you don't know where the entrance is to begin with, yikes. Um, and then to be like, oh, there was some element way back there that I yeah. couldn't see because you're bad at design. Like, well, what? And I guess it just expects you to really be paying attention. Yeah. The other thing is, is because you could be on so many different angles, there's never that guarantee that you've seen the thing. Mm. So I don't necessarily think it's bad design. Okay, it's, it's more of bad Inher luck. Well, inherent to the design. Correct. Yeah. And the, what they do really cleverly is they do use that whole fruit and water symbology so that you can see things and they're still grounded in some form of reality. Right. So you can look at it, say, say you've got some water and you've worked out that you can redirect it and then you might see a turbine and you think to yourself, water moves turbines. So there's that logic to it. Like, maybe mm -hmm. I've got to do that. Like it won't tell you implicitly that that's what you have to do. But for the most part, it's all... You know, it, it, it's grounded it somewhere that, yeah. you, that your brain isn't reaching too hard to find it. It has, what I think is best about it, mm. is it has that um, that same sort of now you're thinking with portals Yeah, I was going to say, it kind of <laughs> Where, like, that. suddenly you're like, gravity, I'm the master of this. It, yeah. Like, it's all good until you hit a point where you're like, oh, that puzzle, and I'm missing the one thing hidden in the corner that didn't connect the dots. I feel like that's a lot of what I'm hearing. I will say, though... Is there any sort of story, or is it just yeah. you were dropped into an abstract environment? You were dropped what into what an abstract environment. There's no story. There's no story, but uh, that that may not be entirely true. It looks like some things may be suffering from some sort of corruption, and as you do sort of uh, find the boxes to light the switches to set the towers, you the corruption kind of goes away. Right. So there is this idea that maybe you're clearing corruption from this world, but it's never explicitly stated. Okay. And it just kind of, it's not needed because the puzzles in the world are interesting and beautiful they enough stand alone, yeah. without a story. Cool, good stuff. So, interesting, yeah. Um, now I have forgotten the name of it. <laughs> Manifold, Manifold Garden. Manifold Garden, a single garden. It's, uh, it's primarily made by like an artist. Right. So that's why it's... So incredibly interesting and beautiful. Yeah, and it, <clears throat> it just does something different to your brain. Mm. Yeah, I've been really looking forward to it for a few years now, so I'm super excited to, to jump into it. Um, and that's the thing, what's always grabbed me is just the art and the Escher style to it because mm. like that just really grabs me. So, And it's really great to hear that the puzzles are really satisfying and interesting and even better than what I could have hoped for. Um, I guess, simple or dumb um, kind of question, does it make you feel like you're in an Escher painting? I, I, it kind it, it yeah no I would absolutely say it does and it does this thing where you'll walk through a doorway and you've been behind the doorway so you know what's there mm. but then that's not what's through the doorway and then you walk into this massive environment where there is like a, a repeating recurring building or a stair or a, just a falling into nothingness and it's just all around you and you feel so mystified by that world 
and it's very cool. So it's available on PC uh, through the Epic Game Store and through Apple Arcade at least. Yes. Might be on other platforms, not too sure. It strong. might be coming. I know that's all it is right now. Ah, right, cool. Um, so awesome. Maybe I'll check that one out. It's hard to explain. You've yeah, already I downloaded that. that deck. Like, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, thank you so much for that review. That brings us to the end of the show for this week. Uh, if you want more New Game Plus stuff, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, YouTube. I think that's about it. Slash New Game Plus TV. The website is newgameplus.tv. And if you want more podcasts, check out Z Games on the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagrams. It is slash Z Games AU. And the website is zedgamesau.net. Uh, but that's it for this uh, episode. Thank you so much for watching, uh, hanging out with us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.